Talking trotters here in uh, sunny Romsey. I've done a couple of things here this, this morning. It's just after lunch. Chris Fenosio joins me. Firstly, welcome back, Chris. Thanks, Paul. Uh, like promoting the trotter and what they're all about, and I know you have a, a real soft spot for them. Um, firstly, how many trotters have you got in work? Uh, probably about a dozen trotters. That all? Yeah, I think about a dozen trotters and ten paces, yeah. Wow. They're all racing then, by the looks? Yeah, we're, we're, oh, there's a few young ones here, but... Yeah, we've got, uh, we haven't had that many racing, but we've had a few of the better ones racing, so, yep, that's how it's going at the moment. Real purple patch at the minute, and, and what, like one of the reasons I'll, I'll, we'll talk about anywhere Hugo in a sec, but it, it, you're just having a great run, but I, I spoke to you just then, and, you know, you're having a good run, but, you know, you reckon you've, you consistently have these sorts of runs, you are saying there about the Breeders' Crown, you had, what, 13 runners on Breeders' Crown days? Uh, I think, yeah, we had 12 in the Breeders' Crown finals last year, and, we didn't have, didn't work out the best. I think they nearly the all of them drew the second row except one. But um, yeah, we had a few of those horses that ran through the better races last year. I think we had six different horses placed in Group Ones last season. So a few of them have come back this year, like RC Phoenix and um, and uh, going good. Like Lady Adelia ran fifth in the Breeders' Crown final last year, and she's just stepped up a bit this year and. Elder Baron Miley was placed in a couple of group ones last year and she's come back in good good order to start her season. So there was a few that had a good solid grounding last year and hopefully they can go on with the job this year. Is that one of the issues with the trotters, that we don't get that exposure? Is that one of the problems that you know the paces still seem to be highlighted a little bit more? Uh, yeah, possibly. But, yeah, I've got paces and trotters here. Like, I had the fastest Victorian trained two-year-old pacer last season here, Louis Luai, and... Um, yeah, we had four different two-year-old pacing winners last year, so yeah, I, th I think they, yeah, they both need plenty of publicity if we can get it. Absolutely, this is talking trotters. Louis Luai, you were in rap with him on Saturday night. Yeah, he ran a great race from uh, made up a lot of ground in a quick last half, so he's um, he can't go much better. But he's probably at this stage. That's how we'll keep driving him. Just and he's going to need always going to need a bit of luck to get into it. Been doing these for a little while, and I know it was one of the great highlights. Um, uh, anyway, Hugo was your first group uh, winner. It meant a lot to you um, back in the day. I think Kai Valley Finn was a very special horse to you as well. Must have been such a great thrill just to get him back into the winner's circle again at Melton on Saturday night. Yeah, he's been fantastic. This, uh, like, it's the most consistent racing he's had since he was a three-year-old. I think he's just had one little niggle after another, and. Uh like Alistair and uh, my Farrier have done a lot of work getting him back and getting him sound and yeah he's a bit of consistent racing and been running against the free-for-allers a couple of weeks before that so it was a good field Saturday night but it was a little drop in class for him and he was good enough to get the job done. Does it get to a stage Chris like you've got a lot of trotters you've got a lot of young ones coming through that you sort of start I suppose second guessing yourself with with a horse like him or is it because of what he's done to to get you started you sort of feel like you owe him um, a bit back to, to get him back to his racing best? Uh, oh, just we're happy to... It was um, just be, probably because Alistair has been so patient with him, like several times he's needed a good long spell and brought him back and um, he's just... Yeah, he's just hasn't had a lot of luck and a lot of consistent racing and now that he's sort of... You've got to be very fit to be winning at Melton in that class yep. of races... He's, he's in, so he's getting fit and he's racing well. The horse at Rustrove, I'm not even going to try and say... How do you say, it? firstly, its name? Aroa Cowie. Aroa Cowie. Yep. Uh, it's a horse that's found good form. You would have been wrapped again with its run on Saturday night. Um, you only... Um, the horse of uh, McNulty's got in the middle of you, yeah. um, and he's a, he's a great horse, but you must have been wrapped with how that horse is progressing through. Yeah, he's definitely. I think that was his 14th career start, so he hadn't had a lot of racing, and he's... Um, you can just see with his action and everything, he's just developing all the time. He'd been very well looked after before we got him, and he's obviously magnificently bred by Love You out of something about Mary. So he's just, we, we think he might be better again with another break, and we'll just keep taking him along slowly. And yeah, it, it takes a bit to get used to racing those really good, hard, fit, older mountain horses. So um, yeah, we're hoping he can keep stepping up, but we'll wrap with him Saturday night. What do you do with him? 
Um, do you like? Do you continue to race him? Do you back his racing off a little bit, or, or that rest? Because I mean, you've got anyway, Hugo. You've got benchmarks a year that you can get yep. him fit to. So, what, what what are the plans with him? Well, he's only four a row of Kowi, so he'll. Um, his main target this year is a Vic bred in September and the Breeders' Crowns in November. I think so. He'll um, at some stage probably just have a couple easy weeks and try and have him fit and as good as we can in September. That'll be that'll be his plan for this season. Lady Adelia, you would have been wrapped with her run the other day. Uh, she lightly raced. What she had twenty starts, I think I, I saw. Chase home, you know, not arguably the best mare we've got in Australia, trotting mare, yep. uh, probably the best mare when you think about it, you know, pound for pound. But she's a she's a champion mare herself. You must have been wrapped in her run. Yeah, the last couple of starts to. It's tough taking on Queen of Leader. She hasn't, uh, our mare hasn't won a Metro race, but she's, could, we couldn't have gone any better the last couple of starts. So she's been, just stepped up a bit this season and seems to be getting better all the time. And she's another one. She'll have the Vic bread in September. So we'll just plan things around that. She might have a few weeks off at some stage and try and have her up and going in September as good as we can. It's going to come around pretty quick. Yeah, it's not far away, so they'll, yeah, they can't have long off, but they don't sort of probably need long off it, um, in the middle of winter. They'll, she'll probably just like stay here and keep her rugged and keep the feed up to her and just freshen her up at some stage. And yeah, hopefully she can, if she's going as good in September as she sort of went against Queen Alita the other night, she should go pretty good in the Vic bread. You've seen plenty of good trotters. You had one of the experiences of a lifetime, I suppose, going to America and, and witnessing them. Seeing Queen Alita up close, <laughs> um, I would imagine it's a little bit frustrating. You know, one, what do you see and, and, and how good do you think she is? Oh, well, she's a great mare. I've had a very, very good view of her the last <laughs> couple of weeks. I've, I've seen her plenty of times. I've raced against her, you know, as a three-year-old and last year and this year. And she's, Lils has done such a great job with her. She just got such a great action. Obviously, she just gets over the ground so good and um, yeah I think she's she's very good I think she might be having a little break now and you know she's she's only five and she's he's given her plenty of time to race against those better ones and kept giving her a break so you know she might keep improving more to more to come Queen Aleta. Yeah, she's scary isn't she like and um Never looks tight. Like she, she always looks like she's carrying, you know, a kilo or two extra. Yeah, I think they always think that they can always, you know, s screw her down that little bit harder when they have to. When the real big races, they probably uh, knew they might have had a bit on the opposition Saturday night, so they she probably didn't have to be a hundred percent to beat us. But um, yeah, obviously she's going to have to take on the best ones. I think in the Inter Dominion in November, December they'll be aiming, so they'll probably try and have her pretty fit then. Um, as a trotting purist and a person who, um, you, know, you know, I think you love the trotter, you know, I think you love harness racing, but probably the trotter's that, that little bit of, a, a lot along with it. Do you, do you enjoy, I don't mean as a trainer, I've got no idea you don't, but do you enjoy just seeing horses like her and, and, and how she's progressing? Yeah, she's fantastic. She's just a great mare and like, you know, watching her races with Ultimate Stride recently and that sort of thing, like... Um, yeah, well, you, you want to see the, the good trotters have always been exciting in Victoria over the years. Like, the, think of the ones we had coming here and racing in the 90s and, like, when prior to Petit and Buster Hanover were coming from New Zealand and racing the top Australian trotters like Wagon Apollo and different things, they were, they were the best races to watch. So it's, it's great that there's a good group of trotters around and, you know, there's nothing better than watching two champion trotters take each other on. It's good that you mentioned Ultimate Stride because a lot of people may or may not realise, I think probably where you develop your love of your trotter, you cut your teeth for a long time with Chris Lang. It's, it's a unique battle because I don't remember seeing Chris Lang driving a horse like he does with Ultimate Stride. I think he even enjoys the, the tussle uh, uh, about it, but you must see a different side to Chris. Do you, do you see a, Chris, a different side, if you like, with Chris Lang in the way he tries to beat this champion mare? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure. I, I have seen him. He's always thought a little bit outside the square, Chris. I remember when I was working for him, he, we had uh, Maori time there and she was only lightly raced and he'd given her plenty of time and Keystone Dale had won 13 in a row and was dull, like short price favourite in the Maori mile and Chris had a bit of a plan and he uh, led and just went for home in the Maori mile and absolutely demolished Keystone Dale and ended his winning streak and so, yeah, he's been 
He's been thinking it the out, bit outside the square for a long time. Chris, it's not something new for him. He's always trying to beat her like he uh, think did the same thing to try and beat me last week with Alda Baron Miley with his mare, yep. Philly Glamour Stride. And, you know, he's, he's, he's a good one for driving his horse to its strengths. Yeah, I, th- I think it's great, but I, I think he just goes that little bit extra with, it might be back to uh, Mari Time Time but with uh, Ultimate Stride because he's a length, length and a half in front of the, the horse on his back and he's always looking and then he, he's running and I think they're great battles and I don't think we, as, a, as an industry, I don't think we uh, so sell those enough because that was a stirring race, those last couple being real stirring races and great for our industry. Yeah, they're <coughs> fantastic. Like, um, you know, watching Chris Alpha drive Queen Elite against... Ultimate stride, he had to go at exactly the right time to win the race. And like it, um, you know, it might look like the field's in single file at one stage and there's not much happening. But if you're watching Chris Lang and Chris Alford in those races, they, they had to do everything spot on to win it. If they make one little mistake and don't go early enough or go too hard or go yep. too late, it's all over. So, yeah, it brings out the best in the horses and the drivers. Yeah, they're great to watch. They're very tactical races. We're going to go back one week. Elder Baron Miley, firstly, um, congratulations with how she is going. Um, you must be wrapped and you've got some big fish to fry um, towards the end of the season with her. Yeah, well, she's done a great job so far coming back. Like She went to Sydney for their Oaks up there off uh, just one run and thought she was really good. Ran home and ran third behind uh, Rockin' With Attitude and yeah, since she's come back, she had an easy week or so and then been really good in a f- few starts. So, um, yeah, obviously she's we're aiming her at the better races coming up later, the Vic Bread and the Oaks, and um, she's got a sales race coming up soon. So she's we've got, yeah, big plans for her and hopefully she can measure up to them all. Trip to, Queen, uh, to sorry, New South Wales, chasing home, rocking with attitude, who is a champion mare. Um, does that season her up a little bit, you think? Yeah, go, going away from home. She, um, yeah, she went up there for a few days and, yeah, I think it does them good going away and then when they come home, they're pretty happy to be home running around and galloping around in their own paddock. So, yeah, hopefully that little trip sort of sets her up for her, most of her race. Yeah, her racing will be here this season. So, yeah, hopefully she's got some... Yeah, we can have her as good as we can for the good races. A good smile to your face when you talk about it too, which I, I like and I think it's encouraging. Right, the one horse I want to, I suppose, highlight because I think what you've got coming up with him is this horse has come back. He's now four from four, RC Phoenix. Um, firstly, has he exceeded your expectations of him this, this prep? I uh, don't know if he's, he's exceeded. Like, I was wrapped with the job he did last year. I think he, um, he beat Plymouth Chubb home several times. He beat Cravash Dior. On his merits, he, and uh, Kravash Dior beat him a few times, was too good for him. But, you know, I couldn't have been happier with the job he did in the Vic Bread final at the end of the year. And I remember when I turned him out, I said to the owners, we'll give him a break and bring him back, and hopefully we've got the best strider in Victoria. So you're always aiming high. And, you know, there's plenty of good ones around. And um, But, yeah, he's so far it's been a perfect prep. It doesn't always go that way like we brought him back a bit earlier than we would have because of this race in Queensland so he really had to win four out of four or go really good in all his runs to to be wanting to take him up there but he's he's been we've been wrapped with all his runs and how he's come through them so yeah at this stage where all systems go for Queensland. I'm, I'm one of them um, probably undersold him a little bit I mean when we talk about that four-year-old or three-year-old crop of horses. I always spoke about Plymouth Chubb, Cravosh Dior, Courage Stride and then uh, Joe Pace's horse who's known just as Harry Stamper. Harry Stamper. Um, have you seen a better crop of, of like three now four year old horses that all have something very very unique about them? Yeah they're, yeah, they're very good trotters like I knew um, <coughs> racing, racing them like RC Phoenix I think he drew seven in the Derby and 13 in the Breeders Crown and in yeah, it was just impossible with the, um, they were just too good for him. But um, like it's sort of whichever one drew the best was always had that fair advantage. And like you saw Plymouth Chubb got beat several times and then come out at the end of the season and beat the group one horses, the older horses. Like so that sort of fr- franked that form a bit. But um, yeah, they've they've all got a step up. Harry Stamper and Courage Stride have come back and shown a bit and like uh, Courage Stride was terrific last start so 
we'll um, sort of find out. We haven't seen Kravashti or we won't see him till later in the season, but find out really how good that crop is this year when they really have to start racing the good ones later in the year. We're going to talk about the Great Square, and the Great Square is a new race, $150,000 race, sponsored by Harassa Trotters, who actually sponsor me with this, and I know they support you with quite a few of your uh, well-bred horses. Don't have the hat or the jacket, left them all at home. Um, they actually sponsor that. There's a sneaky little whisper. I think Carriage Stride might be uh, going up there as well for the, the, the Great Square. One, your initial thoughts about this race and the concept? Because, I mean, we speak about rocking with attitude. Anyone that's not sure she's a three-year-old filly, she's going to be taking on them. Yeah. She gets a barrier advantage. She's going to draw one or two at the, at the very worst. So it's a unique race. What's, what's your first thoughts when you heard about the race? Oh, well, it's fantastic. Queensland are really, you can see how much their trotters have grown up there the last, each year they're just getting better and better and a lot more trotters up there. So, like, obviously it's 150,000, so it's the biggest three- or four-year-old race for trotters in, in Australia for the year. So that's the reason why Courage Stride and my bloke and that, are, they're racing because there's that carrot there and, like, it's um, obviously it's a big trip to get up there, so you need everything you need to travel up there well and everything to go right. But um, yeah, we're, it's just great to have that opportunity to race race up there like that. The track at Albion Park is a little bit unique compared to ours. Probably not as well cambered um, to a lot of the tracks. Where is that a worry for you, or you think you'll handle any track? Uh, he's a big horse, but he's a pretty good trotter. If he's um, when he's trotting good, I think I don't think it'll worry him too much. But um, yeah, I think it it should be okay for him. But yeah, it's, we'll find out a bit when we get there. When do you head up? Uh, probably head up on the weekend and go up over two days, and that'll give him five or six days to get used to the Queensland weather. And which you're looking forward to, I would imagine. Yeah, yep. Well, a um, few of these will have an easy week and Ross Payne will keep the rest of the race runs ticking along and that while I'm away. So, yeah, it'll be. I'm looking forward to it and hopefully the horse has a good time up there. July 8 is that um, race. They've actually made a really, really good carnival. They've actually started the Daryl Alexanders were last week. Are you taking anyone else up or is it just be him? No, it'll just be him at this stage. Yeah, so it's exciting though. And you know, next year, I think, you know, probably when you get up there and experience it, especially if you win, you'll be, be planning a little bit more about it. You said there before about Queensland and them embracing it, New South Wales. The Trotters, it's great what they're doing with the Trotters Australia-wide, isn't it? Yeah, it is definitely. Like New South Wales and Queensland are both really trying to grow them and... Um, you know, the Oaks and Derby in New South Wales were worth a lot more this year and um, they're, both states are getting a lot more young trotters and promoting it with their breeding and that, so it uh, makes for better racing when good horses are clashing from each state and, yeah, hopefully it yeah, makes for, um, you know, it helps, it helps everyone if the other states are going strong. Queensland are actually having Oaks and Adabi, the first one ever, $31,000, So, uh, which is exciting. I mean, people might look at it and say it's only 31000 They never had it last year, so I think that's great for the young trotters. Yeah, it is. So definitely for them, like, it'd be something like, I'm assuming New South Wales horses will go up for it and that just sort of doesn't work for a couple of hours. With There's, there's races on down here, so just a bit hard to race in everything. So, But it's, yeah, great that they've got that and, and you hope it'll grow over the next few years. Oh, and they'll learn from it, Queensland. They might reprogram it or change it a little bit and go from there there as well. Um, Chris, thank you. Got great support behind you, haven't you? Like um, uh, the Haynes's and Shaw's. I, was, I had a mental blank there for a minute uh, with the Phoenix group, but you've also Duncan McPherson, you've got Jim Connolly, you've got so many people backing you. Um, it must be really good for a young person, you know, trying to make a stamp, not just make a stamp in the industry, you're trying to make a stamp at the, at the top of the tree. Um, it must be really good for you right at the minute. Yeah, definitely. I've got some, uh, you know, beautifully bred horses coming and there's obviously a little bit of pressure comes with those. You want to do the best job you can and um, keep, you know, they put a lot, of, a lot of my owners put a lot into breeding them and buying them and that sort of thing, so they want their horses running in the good races, so we've got to do as great a good a job as we can to get them there, but I've got some terrific people here helping me, my family and my partner Elizabeth's family all do a pitch in and do a lot, and Ross Payne and uh, Claire's here all the time helping, owns a lot of the horses, and yeah, I'm very lucky the people I've got around me. 
just quickly, just believe um, going to Sweden. Does that, um, I suppose, stir you to um, have another crack? I mean, as I said, you you went uh, a few years ago. Uh, unfortunately, the horse didn't go, but you still had a great time. The, the idea of travelling worldwide, is that something on Chris Finozio's radar? Oh, it'd be fantastic. I've been to uh, France and seen the Prix d'Amérique and been to America and seen the international trot there. So, you know, you're always dreaming. So if you're getting the best... I think uh, our trotters down here, are, they're bred the same as anywhere else in the world. So um, if you look after him and do things right, that's where you're hoping that you might have one to go one day. Very good. Chris, thank you. Always love having a chat to you talking. Trotters, I could do it for a lot longer, but um, it's cold, it's wet, and you want to go and have some lunch. So I do appreciate it, mate. But thank you very much. Continue going with your what, how you are going. And good luck at the inaugural Great Square, mate. I think it's, uh, it's a unique name. A lot of people aren't aware that it's actually a race, but I think it's a, it's a great concept, and I think it's going to be very, very exciting to be a part of the initial one. So thank you very much, and good luck, mate. Yep, thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul.